poetic justice, the hostess with the mostest, and this right here is Miss Nappy Combs. You know, sisters, we have to embrace our beauty, our inner beauty, our outer scopes, and it's a journey. Miss Nappy Combs is anyone who embraces her hair, her journey. At the same time, I decided to go natural because it was a situation where I was preparing to receive my third master's degree. And I put the creamy crap in my hair, and I didn't say crack, I said crap, in my hair. And as I proceeded to wash it out my hair, I noticed that it was more hair than perm. And I said, what is going on? Well, the result of that was I had to wear a wig to my own graduation, because all of my hair fell out. All of this, oh, by the way, get in closer. This is my real hair, see the part? Bam, that's my hair. So all of this was gone, edges was gone, back was gone. I had about this much hair left. Do you understand how humiliating that was to be in the part of the most happiest part of your life, but at the same time to feel insecure because if that cap or that wig would have shifted because it wasn't enough hair to hold it, that would have been turned into one of the worst days of my life. So our hair is our crown and it's our glory and it, it stimulizes as into what we have gone through. I've gone through a lot of my life. I'll be able to tell my story shortly, but again, ladies and gentlemen, the hostess with the most is the playwright, the filmmaker, the friend, the artist, the harpist. But more than important to that is I am Miss Nappy Combs. Give them edges. Bam. My name is Coco Butter and I work for 95.7 R&B. I do the local news inside the Steve Harvey Morning Show for 95.7 R&B, WBKL, Intercom, Norfolk. Um, and I decided to go natural two years ago. Um, it all, I can reflect back to when I was a little girl and I hated sitting under the dryer. I hated the hot comb. They always burnt me. Then when you started getting uh, chemicals, there were chemical burns. And it was always uncomfortable. I remember the hairdresser telling me, get your hair back under that dryer, because the dryer was so hot and I hated sitting under the dryer. Um, and, you know, I was like plugged into the matrix from a little girl. My hair had to be straight and my hair was naturally curly. Uh, so as I grew up, I felt like I had to continue uh, that tradition, if you will, to uh, keep the perms coming and, and really was not loving me and my hair for who it was because I was born into that. <laughs> chemicals anymore so I just cut it uh, in December two years ago so then I began to lock in July of last year so uh, it'll be one year uh, this July that I began to lock and I am loving it I love the freedom I love the journey I love the journey so that's my personal story of why I've gone natural and love my love locks they're not dreadlocks because there's nothing dreadful about them they are love locks so all you sisters and brothers out there they're love locks and I love you how about that <laughs> know what man is going to look at you and be like, sister, girl, but I'm not you're working with. You know Wait. what I'm saying? So <laughs> that's how you are viewing yourself because you're comparing yourself. But I'm not concerned about what a man says. When well, he looks I, at I just use it as an example. <laughs> just, you have to love to yourself. But I'm just saying, I, I you know. have to love yourself, yeah. but you're comparing yourself right now. But I know what I look like with a little twist, and I didn't like it. But I'm saying when I use the man as an example, you might not like it because you're comparing yourself, but he sees something else that you don't see yet. Well, yeah. That's all I'm saying. Right. Mm -hmm. and you're looking from the He's inside. seeing the beauty that you have not discovered yet because you've been all these years comparing yourself go to what they natural. Okay? But I feel like I have to have a weave in because I'm afraid of the ugly stage. I don't think that I'm ready to embrace like me completely stripped, completely raw, like sure. I don't wear a lot of makeup. And sure, I don't accessorize a whole lot. 
but it's like my hair is my biggest accessory. And I'm afraid of going outside with my, you know, little Afro puff and being labeled Brillo pad head or it being too coarse. You know, like, there's a lot of negative connotations. And I'm glad that you guys can, you know, be appreciative and own who you are and own your hair and do that journey. But for me, I don't think that I'm ready for that. Like, under here, whoo, I miss Macby Combs. <laughs> right now, though, you, know, you got to kind of try to have it together. I don't know. It's a little... It's a little off-putting for me to trip down and be completely raw and let the masses see you and then judge you based off of that. <laughs> no. No. I spoke at a uh, juvenile detention center about two months ago around March. And when I walked in there, there was a young lady who gave me a look. And I, I kind of felt that look of, okay, who does she think she is coming in here? She's dark skinned with this short hair, thinking that she's cute. And, you know, she tried to give me the business a little bit, but I deflected it because of the fact that I know who I am and I'm confident that I, I love my hair, my skin, etc. And at the conclusion of my two day um, workshop, she actually came over to me. And it said something nice, and so I really appreciated it. I remember when I was in middle school, the girls with the long hair got a lot of play, and I had, back then, a curl. Um, and from that point to where I am over 20 years later, when I was a freshman uh, at Norfolk State, I decided to cut my hair off, and I got embraced by the brothers, which for me, was so important because I got that validation from my people and as I began to evolve and learn more about myself and you know gather my groove and so forth I realized that this is really who I was so I love being natural. My former significant other when I first met him I was natural and I had I think I, I think I had um, I had twists but they, they weren't um, they weren't locked and a year into the relationship, he told me one day, well, you know, I really don't like your hair, but I'm sure that you don't care. And he was right. Because I love my natural hair. I've had it low, low. I've had it spiked out. Right now I have my, uh, this is called a mohawk twist. I, I, I coined that phrase, mohawk twist. <laughs> um, and I would never consider doing a perm. So if I were to meet somebody and we got you know heavily involved and he told he says to me, Oh well, I really want you to, to perm and you know grow it and go straight, I'm sorry, but that's that's not me. So but I but over the years and again the nineteen years that I've had my hair natural, uh, guys love it. You know, white men uh, on Wall Street, the brothers in the hood, everything. So, you know, I, I, I received that, but this is me, and I'm trying to grow my mohawk out so that I can put a flower. My, my goal is to get this long, but um, the person who God has for me, he's going to accept me naturally, and that's how it's going to be. I do wear my wigs proudly. Um, however, men have been bold enough to just say, Katrina, why don't you just go natural? I see your beauty in natural and the natural style. Now they see my beauty in the natural style, but for some reason, I I have a struggle with that. Well, honestly, honestly speaking, I have been thinking about going natural. Oh. Um, <laughs> Now, I did do a test run at my job. I decided to just blow dry my hair, let it go, put a little sheen in it, and I went to work, and I got stopped. <laughs> um, who are you? They didn't know who I was anymore because, again, I took out the braids. And I had the, when I came, I came to work with a natural fro for the first time in my life. Now, it's kind of ironic. Growing up in from the 70s, my mother was natural. She rocked the froze. But she dared not put me in a fro. That's kind of ironic. Mm -hmm. So all my life I've been growing up with the straight, you know, the straight and hot press hair. Now, honestly speaking, one thing about that is that my actually, with that being said, my mind has been trained now, trained to more, more so have that straight look. That straight look is natural to me. Being in the 
real estate business, which is predominantly white, they don't perceive you very well as a professional with braids. They look at you very, very strange. And then, um, so I changed my hair and started wearing it straight. And it's more manageable for me. I admire women and the sisters that want to wear their hair natural. I don't like the ugly stage on a lot, of, a lot of them, but when they dress it up with the earrings, the large earrings, they do look nice. But it doesn't work for me wearing natural hair. No. No. I wanted to be an actress. So I was going to move to New York. I was going to take the world by storm. And all the advice that I was getting is that I would never make it because I'm natural. It was discouraging. I had student loans. You know, Sally Mae, we won't get into that. Um, so I went back to work. Then I, you know, you get laid off. You, you go through changes of life. You gotta go back on the interviewing scene. And now I can't get a job because I'm natural. But I fought through it. And out of, I'm getting emotional, but I'm cutting it off. Um, 200 applicants, natural shit got them. So my natural hair got me a job. I stood out and I'm still here and doing well. Those aren't tears, you know, you natural. Now you just wipe it off and, you know, some nice eyes. And you keep on going, you know. Um, the funny story, I went to the movies, I got everybody to go natural, and it was raining when we got out. Everybody is under this little, little booth. People need their umbrellas, they send their dates out to the car, you know. And it's funny, because in that moment, still some residue, I'm getting it together. Um, everybody's like huddled, huddled, and they were black. Everybody was huddled up trying to get to the car, umbrellas, people's umbrellas was blowing away. Me, my sister, and, and my friend, we was like, oh, so that means we ain't got to put no water in our hair tonight. We walked onto the car. We didn't even run. We walked right onto the car, got in. I think those people are still standing outside the movie theater trying to figure out how they going to get to the car. People told me I couldn't be in front of the camera because I'm natural, but how do I look? And um, people said I couldn't be in the courtroom because I'm natural and I'm there. And I wear my natural hair. People may look at me like I'm crazy, but it's me. It, it's, it's my, it started in my hair, then it just went throughout my life. No. No. Um, I remember um, back in the day, when my dad, when my dad had custody of since I was like maybe two, so all I can remember is my dad trying his best to do my hair and well, all of our hair, and I swear, I we looked like we had a turtleneck on because all this was black from uh, him trying to straighten our hair and trying his best to braid it and just get it done. But I mean, we went, we was presentable, but you know, we had a little cocoa butter, some regular butter, any kind of butter we can get to get that burnt from. Uh, as I start to um, get my have my own money when I start working and I start getting my own hair done, I was spending literally almost five hundred dollars a week getting my hair done, buying product, buying track, buying perm. If I couldn't do it, I'd get it done. And then I was like, this is too much coming out my pocket when I can be using that money for shopping, shoes, or whatever I wanted. And then one day I just had an effort moment. I was like, I'm not gonna do that hair wig thing no more. So I had took my uh, wig off unbraided my cornrows and I just chopped off my perm hair and I went and got my hair twisted and I've just been growing them ever since and um, I got money in my pocket now and um, I just love my hair because it shows who I am it shows that I'm not afraid to be black in America and when I was having that effing moment it just came to me that if God made my hair for it to come out crinkly and curly and wavy then why take a, a, a man-made product to permit to conform to what other people want their hair to look like or want your hair to look like theirs. I wanted to say something when you said something to the effect of um, you're going to hell if you're natural 
or is the devil, yeah, whatever. But I'm like, your hair is natural, and nature is natural, and nature is God. So mm -hmm. how can you yeah, say right. that you're going to hell if you're natural? Because right. God is natural. That's right. And I and I felt that when I first went natural, I felt so closer to God. You have no idea right. when you said you got that job and you was out of 200 people, you got that job. God was in there. Mm -hmm. And when when you said that. He's, he made you in your own image. It weren't no parents back then. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to admit in God. True. I don't want to feel about yeah, God yeah. was black. And God was black to me. So for a lot of people, and I know a lot of people, older people, you can't get to them because mm -hmm. they yeah, said yeah. in their ways yeah. and you can't yeah. tell them nothing about nothing. Mm -hmm. But you just got to let them ride with what they know mm -hmm. and let it go. When I went natural, I was working in corporate America. I was <clears> very tired of relaxing my hair and looking like I needed a relaxer two weeks later. Mm -hmm. um, so I just went ahead, I, I said I want to do it. But I did, I did braid, I did do the extensions um, to, go, to, to grow them out because the whole thing you were talking about, the ugly stage, quote unquote, mm -hmm. it was hard for me to, you know, just look at my own natural beauty and just embrace myself. So it took me a minute, but um, I've been natural for not since 1998, and um, it's been lovely. Uh, my hair is so much stronger. The hair follicle is, is healthier. Um, my hair is softer. I thought it was going to be coarse because it was nappy, but it's softer. Really? When my hair grew out naturally, my hair is so soft, and I have so many different. I have straight strands and curly strands, the ether strands all coiled together. It's more manageable to me. So, you know, plus you have to take care of it. You have to condition it. But it's been a wonderful uphill battle because, yes, you are received in different ways. In corporate America, you know, having natural hair is, is like, I don't know. It's a, it's a big challenge, I will say this. And you have to work extra hard to get people to look past your hair. No. No. Hello, my name is Papillon. That is French for butterfly. I believe in change. Um, that was part of my journey in doing my hair and getting it all natural and stuff. I tend to be kind of like a half hippie, <laughs> half Afrocentric conscious person. Um, this is one of my favorite t-shirts, Marvin Gaye. Um, I kind of think sometimes that, which is not true, but I kind of think that I was born in the wrong era and I kind of like that era of time and what he represented. And um, so that's, this is one of my favorite t-shirts. Yeah, I'm all about freedom. That's what life is about to me. And my hair is all about freedom, baby. I'm Miss Nappy Combs. I'm very much into um, empowering black women, black girls specifically, because I have a theory that all black women <laughs> in America go through a stage and a time in their life when they're very young about the, the, the crisis about their looks. So I have this thing where I, I do have two girls and I um, put their hair in locks as well. It wasn't something that I forced on, um, at least my oldest. Um, my youngest is very young, so I guess you can say I forced it on because I did it. But um, I want them to know what their hair is. I want them to embrace their hair God-given. I want them to know what it's like, you know, in the rain, how their hair texture is when it gets wet as compared to dry. I want them to know how to take care of it um, at its natural state. I want them to know that it's beautiful in its natural state. Um, I want them to know themselves um, instead of covering, up, covering it up or straightening it out, making it something that it's not supposed to be, um, and embracing that. So my name's Charity, and you may wonder my journey. It's been about 10 years. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, it, uh, it fits me, my personality. Life for the party, that's me. Um, you know, I get the rub in my head, I get somebody's attention, and um, it's all over. You know what? Me? Charity? Yeah. I'm definitely um, Miss Nappy. 
Miss Nappy Combs. I like to call that. I like to call Miss Nappy Combs. No. No. My name is Sheba, um, and I have been natural actually for about six years. What it symbolizes to me is pretty much letting go. Um, I wanted to get to know my hair, um, so I did. I, I chopped it off and I was unafraid. So that's pretty much what it symbolizes to me. Um, letting go and being fearless and truly embracing who you are. Um, it's helped me with my craft as well as far as being expressive. Um, I act, I like making jewelry, um, I love anything artsy, crafty, anything like that. So um, this journey with my hair has definitely um, been a beautiful one. Um, there have been some turbulence, but for the most part, it's, it's been beautiful. So I look forward to sharing my journey with you. And I'm Tricia. We're the owners of Denati Roots and we are Miss Nappy Company. I opened Denati Roots up around uh, three years ago and I just felt the need for a natural hair care salon that catered just to natural hair. Um, a lot of my clients were complaining about going into salons and not feeling comfortable enough to get their hair done around people that was getting relaxers. So, you know, I just felt the need that I wanted a place just for us, not an African braided shop just a natural hair shop. We do locks, we do natural styles, we do sew-ins, we do braids, but it's not a braiding shop, it's a natural hair shop. So we just wanted a place that people could come in and show what they had, no matter what the texture was, and feel comfortable enough that we're going to allow you to leave here feeling confident and just as beautiful as God created you. I'm proud to have natural hair. So that is why we decided to open the first, and now we're into the third, the Nighty Roots Salon, because our clients have blessed us with their business and continue to come and support what we're trying to do.